fuck <laughs> it's terrifying <laughs> got it <laughs> it's no joke yeah ah! all right three two brother dave hello and welcome to a very special episode of not your father's movies i'm mike and you are dave what's up dave yeah brother dave uh, brother dave in fact yeah brother dave in fact um mm. We're, uh, we're really excited that you're here to talk to us today. So um, like I, I think I was explaining to you earlier, uh, we are, we're recording some interviews for our anniversary episode that's coming up. We've been doing this for a year for some reason. And um, we wanted to talk to each of the guests that we've had on um, over the last year, some of the, our collaborators um, to, uh, to let them have the stage a little bit more than, than usual, maybe. Um, so that's why, you know, I asked if you could join us. Do you have, uh, any problems with that? Are you open to being interviewed? Yeah. I am honored. Yeah. And happy anniversary. Uh, Thank you. one, one year, uh, it's been an honor to be part of the, not your father's, uh, movies podcast family. I'm you know, perfect. it's, a, it, it is a privilege to be a part of our family. That's for <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, I feel it. No, but it really has been wonderful to have you on. So I was trying to remember which ones you were on. I know I, I remember you were on for Nomadland and for um, for it, right? Did yeah, you those, for another episode as well. Uh, no, those are the two. It okay. and Nomadland. It was the okay. first one I did, and then Nomadland was quite a bit later, like three yeah. or four months later, I think. Yeah, that's funny. We kind of had like a whole rash of like of of guests that were on for a while, and as we've gotten sort of busier mm -hmm. over the last, it's crazy. It seems just like you know, a year ago, it seemed like no one would ever do anything ever again. Right. And it was just like, we were just sitting around and like, let's make a podcast. Um, but yeah, as things yeah. got more and more busy, it, it's times gone by. Yeah. Um, well, that was the time. That was the time to start. <laughs> the good old days. Yeah. So um, I've got a few, I have no idea what Vito is going to use from all of this, but um, yeah. Wanted to give him just a couple of things there. I don't know, Vito. Right. Um, but so I've got a few questions for you. All right. And uh, let's take them like in order. And I've also got a surprise question that I wasn't Ooh. supposed to text you beforehand. The gotcha question. All right. A gotcha question. Okay. Um, no new tax increases, right? <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about student loans? Um, no. Hate them. <laughs> Hate them. Okay, so uh, my first question is, what is a dad movie to you? What does it mean for a movie to be a dad movie? Yeah, you know, this is a question that I had to think about both times when I was on. And I think that um, there is, to me, I think, I think there's kind of, there's, there's two kinds. I think there's um, two ways you can, you can look at it. I think a dad movie for one is, is literally one that is, sh that you share with your dad like in a per, in a particular time and in place and there's a sort of like generational transfer that goes on there like you know this is something that you know was informative for me and it, it's essential for you to see it and i want to share that with you and you actually experience that like in the moment and then it's something that becomes part of you that you know not with all those movies but with some movies you feel the need that okay i need to carry on this lineage and and pass it down um I think that's one way it can be. And another way, I think that uh, a good, a true dad movie is one in which you get something important out of it as a kid, as the son or daughter who's experiencing with their dad, but that the movie is rich enough that when you're an adult, when you are a parent later and you watch it again with your son, you get something different or something more out of it. So there's enough in there that it kind of covers, it covers the whole spectrum. And I feel like in movies I've watched with, the, with my dad, there's been that comment that, you know, sometimes it'll be like, oh, I didn't remember that to some risque scene. You know, there's something like, oh, now I, I see that that's, uh, that's risque. But then there's other times, when, you know, when you watch it together and I feel like my dad got something new out of it, watching it 30 years later with his kid. And I think that's kind of the test because some of those movies, you know, he's shared and both of us agreed at the end, like, yeah, actually, that wasn't really that good. You know, like I remembered it being good, but it didn't hold up. But then others, you know, he would say, wow, that's, you know, better than I remember it. So I would say a true dad movie is one that still kind of uh, can uh, withstand that test of time, too. 
that's really cool. That's a really good, that makes me think of like classics, like the classics, right? Like in mm-hmm. general, are, are books that you, like classic books or whatever, books that you revisit, you know, 10 years down the line and, and there's something totally new and you're able to see it from a new point of view because you're older and you've had more life experience. Yeah. It's the same sort of thing, I guess, is what you're saying is that, is that a dad movie is one that, um, that does that where it, it's te- sort of teaching a new lesson or giving you a, a new view of life where it, it ages as you age, maybe something like that. Yeah. And it's one that's like, it's simple enough that you can get the, the main point of it as a kid, but then it's complex enough that even as an adult, you're still seeing further points that it's making that you don't, that you don't see for like, there's just more in there that you can get. Um, and I think if you watch it with your kid, yeah. there's, that's probably part of it too, because you're like always conscious of the fact that they're watching it too. And, and you're thinking about how they're reacting to it too. So that kind of puts it in an interesting space as well. That's cool. Yeah. Is there, I'm, I'm going a little off text here, but is there a movie that you can think of specifically where you're like, this is, this is an example of that? Of a good dad movie? Well, yeah, I, I guess of a, of a dad movie that, um, that sort of uh, is an image of that, like, like captures that sense of, of the term, a dad movie. Um, let's see. That's in okay. My, I'm putting you on the spot here. Right. In, in, well, <laughs> I feel like in my family, there's one that. Uh, so, so I mean, there's a lot. There's maybe a... I should jump to like the next, the next question with that. Sure. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. There's, so, yeah. so, so, so the next question, which, which I think maybe you'll feed, feed this idea into is um, what movie or movies do you associate with your father? Um, I guess that's kind of a part of what you're thinking of when you're, you're saying that. Yeah, um, there's really two that come to mind. Um, probably the one that I have the strongest memory of, and maybe the I would say maybe the first time I remember like experiencing a dad movie uh, was the I think it's from the sixties. A the, it's a sci-fi movie called Forbidden Planet. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It's um, basically it's like a sci-fi retelling of the story of Shakespeare's The Tempest, pretty much. Cool. Where it's um, deep space explorers who land on some distant outpost that was settled, you know, decades ago, but has stopped communicating with the main, if it's Earth or some main human settlement. And so they're sent out there to investigate, you know, what happened. And it's pretty much like the story of the Tempest is they like landing on the island and then they find a um, kind of a mad scientist sort of guy who has kind of learned the ways of the planet and he's kind of the master of it, the way that Prospero is. And he has his daughter and then he has a a robot that basically functions as the aerial, the fairy character. He's got all these crazy powers. That's awesome. And it pretty much mirrors that story uh, more or less. And that was lost on me at the time. I had no idea what the Tempest was, but it was my first experience of a dad movie. I would say that I remember because I was really young, maybe like seven or eight. And my mom had gone uh, to visit her sister down in Dallas. And it was just my dad home with me and um, my younger brother, Thomas. And I think, you know, my sister was still so young that I think she went to bed, but we went to Blockbuster and he was like, yeah, there's this really cool movie we should watch that I I really liked when I was a kid. It's called Forbidden Planet. So I think the whole ritual of him announcing like, you know, this is something that, you know, I'm going to share with you that I watched when I was a kid going to the video store and coming back, which is a lost ritual too. But I think that was part of it. I know. And, um, and we ended up watching it and it, um, it was kind of my first introduction to the world of like sci-fi in general, which was a big part of my dad's personality, especially when he was younger. And the movie was, it was simple enough that I could understand it, but it actually had some real, you know, there was some real, uh, there was some things at stake there and there were, you know, this, this guy was the mastermind guy was, you know, a complex character. Like he was sort of a good guy, but he had his deep flaws that were, that were dragging him down. And then there's a whole plot about, he had discovered secrets of some lost alien race that used to live there and had destroyed themselves somehow, but it wasn't clear which way. And the entire experience was one of, I feel like getting introduced to sci-fi a complex story. And I remember my dad remarking at the end of it that he was unsure if he was going to still like it because it had been maybe like 30 or 40 years since he's maybe like 30 years since he'd watched it. But him making that comment of like, wow, you know, that was great. And him, and then he started talking about how it was the Tempest and stuff. 
so it kind of had the intergenerational thing that he actually came out like you know really satisfied with that um that is cool and then another one i would say is probably ben hur he was always a huge fan of Ooh, Ben-Hur. yeah you know as many people are that's just a great movie but um that's another one make it didn't they remake it in like they the did, and that's to me that's 2000s. just blas- just blasphemous. I don't know how can you, you know? remake that? Yeah. Who would do that? It's just I don't know how how much hubris you have to have to think you're going to do something better than that. I mean, even if you do a competent remake, like there's no way it's going to be anything close to the original. Yeah, the, the history of movies is just basically rising to Ben Hur and falling away from it. There's it's the, it's the it's the pinnacle. It's it's really good. And it's an epic, which is also, I think, a lost art. You know, that's there's, true. There's three hour movies, but they feel like three hour movies. Ben Hur feels like an epic. Um, and I even remember him kind of like prefacing it with that. Like, this is really long. Like, we're going to take, you know, a break in the middle. But like, this is something that you really kind of have to go on on the journey. Um, so that's another one that I really associate with. And, you know, the merits of Ben Hur, everybody, you know, is you know, I don't really have to defend that, but I remember <laughs> just, but I remember again, just being, you know, there's great acting in it. There's, you know, there's real anger and jealousy and love in it. Like, it's just, it's a very like adult movie, but at the same time, like, you know, it's still gritty and real enough that when you're young, you, I was probably maybe like 11 or 12 when I saw that, but it's got the chariot race. It's got everything you need for an exciting movie. And that's another one I remember him sharing with us in that same way, like kind of announcing as like, okay, this is, this is a, a significant thing that we need to, you know, set aside time and actually do the experience. You know, we're not just watching a movie. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. That was like a whole genre too. Like I, I remember watching a ton of those movies as a kid. I remember coming down one day and my parents were watching one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, it was like lion. I, I was like six or something. And there were like lions tearing people apart. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You're like what's going on what's going on what are you watching um but oh man ben Hur, that's cool yeah and i could i could throw in one more that you know i was talking yeah. about where like it where it didn't work um where he oh okay and the whole this is kind of a running joke in our family where he uh he had recommended a movie called brazil which was a terry gilliam movie who was one of the okay. monty python guys yeah he yeah. he was so oh it's hilarious like it's so clever like you guys are gonna love it and that I think we watched with the whole family, but it was another one he hadn't seen in 25, 30 years. And that one I felt like did not hold up at all. And all of us were like, dad, this is so freaking weird. Like, what are you talking? <laughs> and he was kind of like, yeah, this actually is pretty weird and creepy. <laughs> what, what is Brazil is about? I don't even remember, man. It was, <laughs> that's awesome. It, it was, it had, it was psychedelic in all the wrong ways. I felt like, okay. And, um, I couldn't even really tell you what the plot was. I just remember everybody kind of being, I don't think we finished it. Everybody was kind of like, yeah, no, this is not. And even he was kind of like, yeah, missed on that one. <laughs> so sometimes, so that was the thing where like, it just didn't, it didn't have the carryover. It didn't have, you know, maybe it was cool at the time, but it didn't have that timelessness that made it like a real dad movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. I wonder what, what movies like we're going to feel that way about, like, will no country for old men in 20 years, like, will that be a terrible movie? Not, not have held up at all. What do you think? I don't know. I'd like to think that one. I mean, I think any movie where you're making like, you know, deep statements about human nature and then, you know, the acting, the production values are good too. I feel like those tend to hold up. Um, I feel like things that are trying too much to be about a certain specific time or like trying to really capture the zeitgeist at a moment, it's really hit or miss. Cause if they really nail it, maybe it works. But most of the time you look back at that and be like, yeah, no, that was a weird time. I didn't, you know, I don't really want to revisit that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but I usually try to use that as a test when I see movies. I'm like, you know, I wonder like project forward 30 or 40 years, like, is this going to hold up or not? You know, but there's no way to know until you're okay, watching long- it on the other side. Long day's journey into night. Well, long day's journey into night <laughs> hold up in 30 years. <laughs> uh, I think if it holds up the first time, it'll hold up any other time you see it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Have I you seen wa- Limbo yet? Limbo? No. Actually, I don't know what that is. Okay. You got, you got to see Limbo. I'm shouting out Limbo on every single episode until until you guys all watch it because it's great. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Yeah, you sorry, you I, I think I cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh, um yeah, I don't know. I, I sorry, I feel like no country for old men movies like that, I think will hold up. Yeah. Um 
I think that movie, I think that movie intentionally tries to be a little bit timeless because it's already doing like a Western feel at a time when Westerns aren't really a thing anymore, but it didn't feel weird when I was watching it at the time. So I feel like it already did a pretty good job getting outside of time and just telling a story. And, you know, so I, th- I think something like that will hold up. Um, but I, you never know till you're watching them on the other side. I feel like. I know. Cause you it's changed too. too. Yeah. 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 Cause you changed too. That's true. And, and I wonder about like, like there's some, some filmmakers and directors or and writers who you think like, Oh, like these are, these are classic classic writers, classic directors, like uh, Paul Thomas Anderson or the Coen brothers in general, Corbett McCarthy, who wrote that Quentin Tarantino, maybe. Um, yeah. But I, I wonder, like, I wonder about some of them, like who's going to like Edgar Wright is Edgar Wright going to be around, um, you know, in, in 30 years are people going to remember him? Mm-hmm. Um, I love Edgar Wright. I love the movies that he does like Shaun of the dead and, um, and uh, uh, baby driver, which we've talked about. Ooh, yeah. uh, on the show yeah, yeah but but that's also like that's that's kind of a zeitgeisty movie same with Shaun of the dead same with um uh the cop one why can't i ever remember the name um but yeah i don't know i don't know yeah i, I they're, think they're it's kind really... of yeah they're kind of like of the moment because like these are things that people are focusing on they're very genre focused mm-hmm. um but at the same time it's kind of lampooning the genre as a whole yeah Oh. yeah which that kind of if it puts it a little bit outside the genre i feel like that stands a better chance yeah mm-hmm. um but i don't know again i think until you're watching it when you're different 30 years from now and you see it again i feel like there's never any real way to know because i feel like there's some things that you know win oscars or are super acclaimed that even 10 years later they're forgotten about or everybody was like yeah what were we thinking you know yeah. when we we're into yeah. that you know yeah yeah it was so. a weird time yeah, so only time can tell, I think, on those. But but I don't know. I, like I said, I think that there's a certain timelessness that a movie can achieve that makes me feel more confident that it'll stand the test of time. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, what movie would you want your kids to associate with you if you if you ever have if you have kids? What yeah. movie would you want them to be like? This is a this is my dad's movie. Yeah, yeah. When I saw that, I thought of. I thought of two, like one a serious one and one a more a more goofy one, uh, but I think those are both legitimate dad movie uh, paths. Absolutely. Um, I think the first one, which um, we watched together at some point, I believe, was in a better world oh, uh, yeah. by Suzanne Beer. I, I think that's probably one of my favorite movies of all time, and I think the fact that even the that the storyline has so much to do with with fathers and sons in the movie, but fathers and their children, and kind of like intergenerational trauma and healing at the same time. Um, Aside from the fact that I just feel like visually it's a beautiful movie. Like everything about it is it like, there's a lot of color to it. Like there's a lot of like studio gloss to it, but it doesn't feel cheesy in any way. Like every bit of it just feels like it's there to amplify the human story that's going on. And I think aside from just the intrinsic value of the story, I think that, that type of presentation is the kind of movie I would want my kids to associate with a good movie. Like all the production techniques are in the service of, of teaching you something really profound about, about life. And I think that the, they're pretty timeless themes in terms of, you know, revenge and forgiveness that are lessons everyone has to learn. And I think that movie teaches them well. And I think, yeah, the intergenerational aspect of the story, I feel like would make it even more of a, more of a dad movie for me. Um, so that one for sure on the serious side. And I, and I think on the comic side, I would have to go with school of rock, honestly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Yes. School of rock. I just, I just love that movie. And like, I acknowledge, you know, it's just a fun movie, but I feel like, you know, there's a big part of me that's just a rebellious guitar guy that wants everybody to have a good time. And like, I feel like <laughs> that I feel like Jack Black just captures the spirit of that. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Let's just stick it to the man and rock out. But there's not, but there's still like a real joy to it and a real, a real fun to it. And um, I feel like that's the side of my personality that I would definitely want to share with my kids. And to me, that's the kind of movie where you, you do want to not just watch it out of the corner of your eye, like you want to sit down and like enjoy it. So I would have to, I would have to uh, put that in as a dad movie for me as well. I, I, well, and it's made by your favorite director of all time. Did you know that? Yeah, Linklater. I didn't know that for. <laughs> I didn't know that for the longest time. That was like maybe in the last few years that I realized that. Yeah. I was like, it makes so much sense. Like, <laughs> no. 
like even you know, even, even with a plot he's good you know <laughs> <laughs> even with a plot he's good yeah without he can do it all it's yeah. amazing he could do it all <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know i have never actually seen all of school of rock oh really can you believe that yeah no yeah. you're missing out i guess so i guess so if if it's going to be one of the ones you want your kids to associate with you i've got to see it yeah i feel yeah. like you'll you know see it it's just fun i mean i feel like yeah. i've seen it probably I mean, I even already shared that with like younger siblings because I'm the oldest. So yeah. I remember, like, I feel like I've been home like babysitting at points like in high school. And I was like, let's get School of Rock and watch it. So I feel like I've already had kind of the, that like, you know, pseudo experience of already passing it down. And they loved it. And it was fun. Yeah. Like, I already have that memory of like, again, I think going to maybe a dying blockbuster at that stage, but it was it was still there. And uh <laughs> decrepit but still standing and they were paying you uh, to take movies rather than right they're like please on. come in yeah <laughs> um i think they were desperately trying to go with the video game rental at that time oh um, yeah it was the last gasp of blockbuster but it was still there and do, i remember do you remember when blockbuster started like a netflix type service uh, right no. so they no it was it was crazy for the, there was like a year overlap so blockbuster right as netflix was getting into streaming i think blockbuster mm -hmm. had just started to get into like the video like the the sending videos to home to, oh, to really? people's homes rentals yeah but then uh -huh. like after a year of that netflix kicked off streaming and blockbuster was just like we're done yeah we're like, out. like <laughs> they just gave up it's like all right bye <laughs> yeah okay we can do dvds in the mail i guess uh, yeah but, yeah no, I don't remember that. Um, we we had one like two blocks away from our house, though. Oh, so like it, it was a sad loss, you know, because that was kind of part of the, you know, part of our neighborhood pretty much. Um, yeah. And that was that would have been right at the end that we got School of Rock. But just that was one of my last memories of that that ritual of going there, getting some candy, getting some popcorn, renting the movie and coming back. And I think my parents were out of town or or out at dinner or something. I was watching the kids and we we did School of Rock together. And That's uh, awesome. Yeah. So I feel like I already felt motivated to pass it on even in like mid high school. So I can't imagine I would withhold that from my kids. It'll stand the test of time for me, I think. Dude, that's awesome. And that, I, you know, that explains so much of why you had that like dad energy. You're the oldest sibling, you know, you're the yeah. oldest boy. You're kind of, you've kind of led your family already to, to the promised land of school. Of yeah. Rock. Yeah, That's exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm guiding them out there, parting seas and showing them the way. Yeah. For sure. Imagine <laughs> you like carrying, like dragging Ruben along to, to, um, to blockbuster, like we're kind of watch school of rock. Yeah. He, he loved, loved yeah. he loved it. Yeah. He would have been maybe, um, yeah, he would have been really little, like six or seven or something like that. It was, yeah, no, it was good times. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. I've got, one more question i've already told you about five minutes before we started this um here i'm not sure how i feel about this question Vito told me to ask you it okay um what do you think of the show so far and i i don't know maybe you can only say nice things but <laughs> right. you can feel free to say unnice things as well go it's for the, say whatever you you want it's, it's the best podcast i've ever heard has it changed your life, Dave? How how has not your father's movies changed your life? Um, I mean, I, it's gonna be more. I think I feel like what I have to say about it is more like in tune with, like, more in line with like the, the ones that I've been on. Just because I feel yeah. like I like engage so much more, like thinking about it and being in the room. Um, but I think I mean I would say it's changed my life, my life in the sense of like introducing the category of dad movie, like we've been discussing. Like I hadn't really like thought of that before. But I think having to answer the question, like, is this a dad movie for you, like, is an interesting way to think about a movie, especially one that you that wasn't shared with you when you were a kid, um, like it or Nomadland or new movies, but then evaluating, is this something I, would, I need to add to the collection? Because, you know, a tradition has to start somewhere. So yeah. if you're thinking about dad movies, you always have to be on the eye. Of, oh, is this one that I'm going to start a tradition on? So I think the introduction of that category does make me uh, view movies in a slightly different way, you know, with perspective of, of like, you know, it's not just me, but like, is this something that needs to be to be shared as part of the part of understanding who I am and part of uh, just something that's, you know, beyond both of us, but like needs to be passed on to kids, too. So like Nomad Land, I remember having a really, you know, feeling oh, yeah. in that episode that like, like, yeah, like I really resonated with me. And like, if I want my kids to understand me, like they would need to, to see this movie to get, you know, to get that spirit. 
So I would think in that sense, yeah, it definitely has changed the way that I watch movies for sure. Like it's always in the back of my mind and most movies don't make that cut, but it's always like another like criteria that I, that I apply for sure. That's cool. You know, that episode was, was funny because like you and I were both with Nomad Land, like, yeah, this is a, this is a meaningful movie. Like this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. we were like, we would definitely take a, like if, if all, if our lives went in a different way or whatever, didn't have the different responsibilities that we do. Well, I mean, you, I guess you kind of live this life. Still fairly nomadic. Yeah. 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 If my life were to change and I was not to have, you know, my family and, and my, my actual children, um, like I could see, I could see going this route and being like, yeah, yeah sure. I'd, I'd be a nomad. And Vito and Jesse were like, this seems horrible. I would never right, yeah. do this. It was not a, <laughs> it was not a huge, it was, it was a, a weird, kind of a weird experience because it was very polar. Um, I don't know. It, it was. And I remember being surprised that it was so polarizing, yeah. you know, but again, that made me think about, yeah, that really is like my perspective and I can totally see why that would not be appealing in the slightest, you know? Yeah. But but I'm part of being, why being I love spread. that movie and, and why yeah. I love like I love this show and I love it when when you come on because I feel like with it too that was outside of your your comfort zone of movies as well and yeah and that was so much fun oh yeah I'm gosh. glad I'm glad you guys pushed me because yeah I'm a total scaredy cat on any kind of horror movie I never watch them and yeah. I don't think that qualifies as like severe horror but it was scary it was scary for me yeah. um but that was cool too because it made me connect to my childhood because I had read that in at far too young of an age, really. <laughs> but I mean, it was definitely part of my childhood. And I had that in the back of my mind for better or for worse. And um, I, it was really interesting to kind of travel down memory lane with both the movie and the discussion too. Um, and I think it, especially a movie that's again, it's like about childhood and about, well, really about the transition from childhood to adulthood, which again, like just the story itself is, is a good dad movie type of material. Um, I think so. Um, yeah, I think it's good. I think it's a good new category and I think, cool. uh, you guys do a good job of drawing, uh, drawn out what needs to be drawn out for sure. Well, thank you so much. You know, I've got like two other questions before the surprise question, but, oh, okay, sure. um, but that are also surprises, but not the surprise. Okay. If that makes sense. <laughs> All right. uh, um, it, will you, do you want to come on in the future? We've got, we've got a few things going on. Um, I think we've got it mapped out through like end of October okay. Um, or like the episodes through October. So we're doing, um, did you like a quiet place or? Uh, no, uh, actually no. I didn't, okay. I didn't okay. care for that. No. Okay. We'll skip those then. Okay. Um, but maybe uh, we've got, well, maybe after that, would you be willing to come on again? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. I got a mic. I got headphones. I got time. Yeah. Sweet. I'm always, I'm always down to talk about movies. And you know, you've, you've always got a mic. <laughs> got two mics yeah i love it <laughs> um uh if you were to choose a movie to do on our podcast what would it be oh that's interesting um oh my gosh yeah there are a lot I, of I, it, it could be like the forbidden planet um if you, uh, you, to be, you know actually that that would actually be a really good one um okay or, or waking life like oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually yeah waking life yes. uh, you know Vito, what Vito, we got to do waking life next time so i would if you do if you do waking life i'm i'm so on um oh my gosh i feel okay. like that that one will go into outer space pretty quickly but <laughs> that's one of those ones that like i'm i would love to have a real conversation about it because so many people especially my family trash that movie and i love it it's so important to me only my brother ruben gets it everyone else thinks it's navel gazy garbage and like okay that's an aspect of it but i still think it's <laughs> i still think it's worthwhile um, isn't I, isn't that what makes it worthwhile how navel gazy yeah. garbagey i mean it's exactly. got alex jones in it for crying out loud yes like, like early alex jones <laughs> early like alex 90s jones. alex jones yeah talk about a time capsule it's amazing and he hasn't changed all that much really it's okay. impressive uh, maybe another one. I think I mentioned, I might have mentioned this in Tevito at some point, but like when I was thinking more of like kids movies was uh, The Never Ending Story. Ooh, yeah. I feel like that would okay. be good. That would be a good candidate as well that I would talk about for sure. Okay. Um, we haven't done a kids movie in a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking. It's like shifted more yeah. into like adult, but that's one I feel like that has like a heavy dose of existential angst for a kids movie. <laughs> 
And I remember feeling it as an already existentially inclined kid and be like, what? Damn. Like, you know, <laughs> this, is, this is heavy. So that would be another candidate if you wanted to do a kid's movie. But yeah, any of those, okay. I'd, I'd be down for sure. Okay, cool. So we're going to do, we're going to do a Dave series. It's going to be the Forbidden Planet, Waking Life, and, um, and the Never Ending Story. There we go. Yeah. That's what's coming up next. A trilogy, if you a will. Trilogy. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Now I've got the surprise question. All right. Um, okay. So the way that, that Vito phrased this is what movie that has come out in the last two years would you call a dad movie? And I guess it can't be Nomadland because you already, you already yeah. said that was a dad movie. Right. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to modify it because I know you don't see a lot of new releases to say what movie that you've seen in the last two years, if it's a new movie or something that's new to you. Yeah, um, it's not a newly released movie, but I feel like it never got the attention it deserved. So I feel like it's still new in terms of like how many people have seen it. Um, it and we may have talked about this at one point, uh, Take Shelter. Oh, yeah. 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 Which, you brought that up a lot. I still yeah, haven't seen it. it it's, it's incredibly good. And I actually rewatched it just this past year. I had seen it maybe maybe eight or nine years ago. I think it's from like 2011, 2012, something like that. Okay. And uh, it's got Michael Shannon and Jessica Chastain. Yeah. And um, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's absolutely totally about family and being a father for one. And I, I, yeah, it's about a lot of things. I mean, it's, it's got elements of suspense and a little bit of horror in it too, but it's also a beautiful story about family and about what it means to be a father. And this guy, grappling with it and i think cool. the the performances of both michael shannon and jessica chastain are like truly tremendous and it handles the topic of mental illness in a really profound way not in a not in a kitschy way um it yeah. really i think it's at the heart of the matter is from what i can you know from what i can tell um so i would consider that a dad movie absolutely um it's not recent but i don't re recall it getting much yeah. attention it was just kind of a you know, and it, I think we went and maybe, I think I saw it um, like when I was home for Christmas and it was just, there's, it was just kind of this like small time theater we would sometimes go to that had interesting movies. And I saw it with a couple of members of my family there. We both walked out like, you know, wow, that was, that was something else. So I would consider that a well, dad movie for me, for sure. Cool. What, um, it, is there like a basic plot structure or anything that you can share? Would you, would, yeah, would you say go in without knowing anything? No, you can go. The basic idea is, um, there's this guy, middle America, uh, Ohio or something somewhere. He's like a you know working class guy. He works on an oil rig or I think it's or mining or something like that. And seems like he's got kind of, you know, your basic American dream going on. He's got a nice little house, you know, beautiful little girl who she's deaf, but he um, he got promoted at his job and he got a new health insurance package and they'll pay for cochlear implants. And so they're getting ready to get that surgery for her. And it seems like everything's going well. Um, but then he soon starts having these really intense and, uh, realistic nightmares about people, people that he loves or people that he knows who are trying to kill him or trying to, trying to hurt him in some way. And oh, wow. he starts getting this deeper and deeper sense of foreboding that something really bad is coming. And he keeps having dreams about these really distant, uh, storms, like huge storms that are coming in to wipe everything out. And he starts getting really worked up about this and he starts fixating on redoing a tor an old decrepit tornado shelter that's in his backyard. And he starts obsessively spending too much money, like digging it out and turning it into this like bunker. And everybody thinks he's going nuts and his family's freaking out. And, but the whole time there's this in the back of his mind, he knows that his mom was, uh, had been diagnosed with schizophrenia at right around the same age as he is right now. So he's trying to understand, like have consciousness of like, am I developing schizophrenia? Like, am I going crazy or am I, but he, with the sense of feeling that there's, that there really is something bad coming and he needs to protect his family from it. And it goes, it goes from there. Um, cool. That sounds it's, fantastic. It's a beautiful, yeah. it's a beautiful movie. Yeah. Um, and the way that he balances that, that, you know, middle America, Joe, the plumber guy with also this deep sense of, of, 
of fear and wariness about about what's coming. I think it, it captures a feeling. I think even just in a in a more basic sense of like that. A lot of times, if things are going really well for you, there's kind of that mm-hmm. nagging nagging voice in the back of saying like, "This is going to fall apart. It can't last." You know that this that this is too fragile. Um, yeah. So I think it captures. There's a lot of things going on in it, um, but cool. it's absolutely worth seeing. I highly recommend it. it sounds a little scary. Sounds a little scary to me. Like, I don't know if I want to go into that headspace. <laughs> it, it is. It, it could have been really scary. I mean, it is yeah. kind of scary. No, no question. I mean, I mean, but, yeah, yeah. But I, I think it's handled in such a good way that, yeah, it, I think it, um, it says, it says the right thing about all those issues, in my opinion. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to see it because you've, you've told me many times that I need to see that. So it is, it's now high on the list. Every time okay. someone tells me to see something, it goes higher on the list. Okay. <laughs> Well, I advocate for that. I think you'll love it. I think, I mean, I think, I think, I think anybody who likes movies will enjoy that for sure. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dave, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for, uh, for hopping on and and talking to me about some of of, uh, some of the dad movie stuff we've got here. We're really looking forward to having you on again in the very near future. Appreciate it. And congratulations and happy anniversary. Thanks, man. Good night. All All right. Take care.